my name is Lon Safko, co-author of the Social Media Bible, published by John Wiley and Sons, the most comprehensive book ever written on the subject of social media. And today, believe it or not, we are here with Peter Wiley, chairman of the board of John Wiley and Sons. Uh, published, and today we're going to talk about uh, publishing, and we're going to talk about social media, and we're going to talk about the Social Media Bible. So, uh, Peter, gosh, this is awesome to have you here today. Thank you. Well, it's my pleasure, Lon, and, and not only is your book about social media, but the creation of your book is a form of social media, and I think that's interesting. I think you're doing a pioneering piece of work here. Well, that, that's exciting, yeah, because uh, we're trying to do that. It's all about user-generated content and trusted network, and by bringing in all of these different people really to contribute, I want to be the aggregator, kind of pulling it all together. Can you uh, tell our listeners a little bit about your background? I mean, we know that uh, you're a direct descendant of the famous John Wiley. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about, and, and you're an author as well, is that true? Yeah, that's true. Actually, I, I started out on, on it's independently as a, an author and publisher. I'm a member of the sixth generation of Wileys involved in the publishing business. We are 201 years old. There is a seventh generation, two of my sons, both of whom are aggressively working in social media. And uh, I've been the chairman at Wiley since 2002. Prior to joining our board of directors in 1984, I was a magazine publisher and a newspaper reporter, a uh, writer of articles for magazines, and the author of five books. Wow. So you really do have publishing and writing in your blood. Couldn't get away from it. <laughs> That's for sure. And you said that uh, um, your family, as well as the company, celebrated its 100th anniversary last year? Uh, 200th. 200th? Right. 200th. So we like to say Thomas Jefferson was president when the company was founded. Oh, my goodness. That's absolutely amazing. I didn't realize it was 200. Social media was writing a letter, which uh, was then (laughs) handed to somebody who got on a horse or handed to somebody who was uh, getting on a stagecoach and... uh, in the good in the good seasons, when it was dry, uh, it would take a while to get from say Virginia to New York. In the bad season, when it was muddy, it uh, probably went by ship. And now we've got information and creative ideas flying through the through the air at the speed of of the electrons. So basically, we went from the quill to the iPhone. That's it. <laughs> that's, that's an amazing journey. Um, I'd like to talk a little bit about uh, John Wiley because I'm really excited. I've, I've published uh, five books in the past, and this is my first one with John Wiley and Sons. I've got to tell you, the experience has just been terrific. And you guys always seem to be on the cutting edge of business and education with your uh, Wiley Cliff Notes, your uh, Wiley Blackwell for science, medical, technical. And you've had this amazing success uh, with the For Dummies series. Uh, um, it, it, how do you recognize these incredible trends? How do you stay so close to the very edge of technology, business, and education? Well, I, I think there's there's two things. One is that we listen. Mm. And going back, I know when we talked earlier, I talked about uh, how we began experimenting with, uh, we introduced computers into the business in the 1950s, but ex- under, trying to understand then an experiment with uh, with personal computers and networks really aggressively 25 years ago. And our ideas about what we should be doing as a business came from our authors. Mm-hmm. Um, we listened very carefully to them about what they thought was going to happen. So that's part of it. And the other is creating a cultural in- internally to Wiley that uh, can implement, that can not only gather information by listening to authors and experts, but also develop within the company or with partners, as the case may be, the Mm -hmm. the necessary uh, social experiences. I'm not supposed to use platforms anymore. Community (laughs) experiences, social experiences that are helpful to us and to our authors and to our customers. And I got to speak personally to that, that that is really absolutely true about listening to your authors. Um, as I said, uh, several of my other books were published with um, other major publishers. And when I brought social media to them two years ago, uh, I could never even get to the Blue Sky meeting. They had no idea what it meant. Nobody wanted to take the time to understand what it meant, even though I was trying to explain that this was the way the business was going to go. The moment we brought it into John Wiley and Sons, you guys looked at it and said, you know what, you got something here. You listened, and um, we're putting together the book and I, I got to thank you for that. Well, I would, you know, I think one of the things is 
that's, that's interesting about what we do is we, we use social networks. Uh, now we use them electronically before we use them in an interpersonal way to understand who you are and what you're capable of doing. So our initial conversation when you told me of your history um, in the world of technology, I was very impressed. And so step one, okay, I recognize that this guy is somebody who has been right on the cutting edge himself of a lot of this. Step two is to use our social network um, to evaluate really your capabilities and your your proficiency and whether you're going to uh, be able to deliver to us a, a manuscript that we'll be able to sell. Mm-hmm. And so it's very interesting the way in which the whole author-publisher relationship is evolving um, using social media. And what you said right there, too, kind of leads to the next question and, and kind of a follow-on of the first one is that you guys really are risk takers. I mean, yeah, you kind of looked at what my background is and you were betting on me to deliver, as you said, a manuscript that's sellable. And even more importantly is is that you guys made the evaluation that social media manuscript is a manuscript that could be sold if written properly. And again, I think that my kudos go out to John Wiley and Sons because of your ability to, to see the trends and more, most importantly, your willing to take those risks yeah well, we we uh we built risk taking into the organization quite a while ago and we've uh we've fallen our on our face being way ahead of the curve at times mm-hmm. and i think what we've learned is it's best to be on the leading edge rather than the bleeding edge because we spent some time on the bleeding edge we created an interactive video disc in the 1980s and put a sales training curriculum on it and this was a brilliant piece of work it was it used dramatization, you know, videos of um, sort of almost soap opera type scenes. We use Maslow's personality types wow. uh, to uh, instruct salespeople how to interact with people. And what we showed in this video was ways in which you would interact with the, uh, say, the the assistant, the person you were trying to sell to. And it had it had assessment tools built into it. We we bought a training company, we bought an assessment wow. company, and we built assessment capabilities into it. We had gates that you had to get through. If you didn't get through the gates in your, in your training, then you were instructed about where to go back and start again. It was very sophisticated and very much like what we are selling um, very aggressively and very successfully in higher education right now. It flopped. Mm-hmm. And the reason it flopped was that we were ahead of the curve. You had to buy a $25,000 Sony uh, video machine, and we couldn't convince companies that it was better to buy this machine and get the video disc than it was to send people to uh, Eden Prairie, where our our headquarters were at the time for the training business, to uh, sit for days in seminars and pay the price and the transportation, or to have one of our consultants come and work with them. We just couldn't make that sale. It was too <laughs> it was too advanced. <clears throat> so I think what, from from trying that and from being close to people, for instance, who, who built the DARPA net, and those are the people we listened to. Those were our advisors, people on our board of directors. Wow. By being close to those people, over time we learned what was a judicious form of risk, risk-taking rather than a, a, uh, uh, an overly aggressive form of risk-taking. And kind of a more calculated risk. Yep, yeah, absolutely. Well, yeah, well, you, you mentioned laser discs uh, in the early 80s. I mean, that was even the predecessor to the beta and the VHS VCRs, right? Yep. I mean, those were the big discs that kind of looked like a, a, a long-playing LP78? Yes, yeah, they were, they were huge. I actually have the discs. I think the... Uh, the content is probably degenerated so that I can't use them anymore. And the, the package uh-huh. itself <laughs> with the disc and the, and the kind of metal box that's in it weighs, weighs quite a bit. And the machine, <laughs> machine was very large. Wow. But it was, it was interesting because at that time we had uh, J.D.R. Licklider, who uh, wrote a seminal essay on what he called the intergalactic network in 1961 wow. when he was working in the Defense Department developing DARPANET. We had him working with us. We had Robert Sproul, who was one of our authors, who sat on our board of directors. He was an electrical engineer. He also was involved with uh, the DARPA net. And we had a guy from, named Pete Jensen from uh, Georgia Tech. And Pete said, oh, what we need is we need a traveler's desk. Hmm. Well, what's that? Oh, that would be a place where we would aggregate all the information that our salespeople were collecting on the road and put it in a database that the salespeople could interact with and use to uh, you know, sort of build cumulative, 
cumulatively knowledge about what we were doing. Wow. And we kind of went, hmm, that's interesting. Uh, it sounded kind of blue sky, but we did it over time. And he was recommending that we do this in the middle 80s, and it took us another uh, decade to really get this off the ground, and it's only really been perfected in the next decade. Wow. Can you imagine? I mean, listen to all of the things that you said back then where you say, well, you know, that sounds like a good idea. And now today we just take all of that for granted. Yep. That's amazing. I mean, yeah, you were 25 years ahead of the curve. And isn't it amazing also that people would not invest twenty five a one-time $25,000 investment in this type of technology, but yet over the last 25 years have spent millions yep. flying people around? And the, the direct successor of that particular experiment with the interactive video disc is, is video conferencing. And we're running a video conference, uh, I'm not sure, I think it's next week sometime, where there are 700 attendees. Wow. Um, and it's a, it's a conference on, on business leadership. And in this particular economic environment where uh, companies can't afford really to put people on planes and put them up in hotels, this makes a lot of sense, and the interact the uh, the video conferencing is, is interactive in the sense that you can you can not only uh, see the presentations on your laptop or your t PC, but you can interact with the with the speakers, and then there's a, a chat feature that uh, goes on, so you can be uh, commenting and, and talking with the speakers while while if there are four speakers, while one of them is making a presentation, you can be chatting with the other. Yeah, isn't it, that webinar technology just yeah. amazing? Yeah. Um, just recently, about uh, six months ago, I founded a company called World Webinar Network, and the purpose is, is so that we can do social media webinars, and we never have to leave Phoenix, and our participants never have to leave their respected cities. Yeah, and I'm, I'm, I'm doing it myself. There's not an interactive feature. I've been, uh, you know, I encourage our, our board of directors to, on a regular basis, participate in governance programs, um, you know, to gain greater knowledge of, of issues in the field of governance. And I use the National Association of Corporate Directors um, videos, which they, they stream to you. They haven't built in the interactivity feature yet, but I'm sure that's coming. Sure, sure. Uh, you could actually probably just use a, some type of um, uh, iChat or instant messaging, such as Google, Yahoo's, or even AOL's, to just overlay. Yeah, uh, we did that yesterday. Um, we interviewed the CEO of Linden Labs, who created Second Life, the virtual yes, I world. I saw that. Matt sent that to me. Oh, oh my gosh, that was just the most amazing thing. Our two little cartoon critters were sitting talking to each other for half an hour. In the meantime, we had an MC sitting off to the side, and he was receiving these instant messages, these text messages, which he would then voice to us as questions, and then we could address those and answer to the audience. And it was completely interactive, and nobody left their respective cities. Yeah, that's interesting because uh, we have a bookstore in Second Life. Oh. And uh, we actually publish a number of titles in that area. And it, it's lead me, led me to think more about marketing yeah. and, and how you market. Because what we know is that the traditional, when we, we talk about authors, we use the term platform. What's Lon's platform, by mm -hmm. which we mean... Uh, does he speak regularly at conferences? How big are they? Um, is he going to get on Oprah? Is he going to get on Good Morning America? Will his books be reviewed? And in some of the traditional print forms of, for marketing, and specifically book reviews, are having a very difficult time right now because newspapers, the print newspapers are, are failing, really, and yes. uh, book reviews are being either downsized or completely eliminated. So now we're looking, and television, yes, it works to a degree. I think it's very effective at times. We've had experiences with authors going on uh, very high-profile television programs and selling a lot of books, like mm -hmm. Oprah. Yeah. We've had experiences of with other authors going on high-profile television programs and not selling a lot of books. So now mm -hmm. we're looking more at these networks, at the social media networks that authors have. And... Uh, trying to understand the way in which you've created your own community uh, digitally and how we can, we can get to that community to explain to people what your book's all about. But the interesting thing is the way that you're actually authoring the book is, uh, is creating the platform. Yes. 
And that is exciting because by partnering basically with 30 or 40 of the largest Fortune 500 companies in the world on social media and by bringing them in, they're contributing, they're branding basically a chapter, but they're also becoming marketing partners. They're becoming Absolutely. trusted friends. Yeah, that's, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> and this is exciting because, and, and that's the exciting thing about social media is exactly what you said. In the old days, everything was done kind of with a handshake and a wink, and we're just kind of moving more electronically, but we can increase our network exponentially by using electronic forms because when I tap into one person, let's say, in LinkedIn and ask for a favor, he may have access to 100, 500 people uh, that also have their own trusted networks, and by picking this one person, building a trusted relationship, I now have access to his 500 people. And then, of course, this goes on and on and on as you start to build your networks. I mean, imagine the type of networks that's going to be supporting this book when you talk about Google and Yahoo and LinkedIn and, and all of these giants. Of course, as, as a commercial publisher, uh, we're interested in metrics. So we're interested in seeing the evolution of the effectiveness of marketing and the effectiveness of networks. Mm -hmm. And I think we're at an early stage with that, but um, I really look to the libraries uh, in their interac interaction with publishers um, because they are able to, to uh, me measure usage. Yes. So say they license 100 journals from us. They can look at uh, which, one is a, which of those journals are being Use. They look at two things, impact factor, mm -hmm. which is um, the impact of the content on the audience that it's trying to reach, um, and journals are rated according to their in, 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 impact factor, and the other is usage. Oh. And so the librarians are saying, okay, you know, I've got these 100 journals, but um, you know, only 98 of them are really being used, so let's look at these two that we might eliminate or replace with other other journals, yeah. and maybe they should remain in the collection even though there's a low usage. So there are metrics being developed, and I, I assume over time, right now, we go to Google and you know, we look up Lon Safco, and, and we can get a rough metric there. But I think over time, we'll be able to measure more, more accurately uh, the impact of, of, of your work and of your, your particular social network. And that is also one of the things that's exciting about using social media and the Internet just in general is that, uh, first of all, when I designed the outline for this book, my intent really was is to create a reference guide so that we can do just that, get it into every public corporate uh, higher education library, um, not only for sales but for uh, dissemination of the information. But secondly, any time anything is distributed over the Internet, you can track incredible amounts of information by looking at server reports or comments on the blogs and you really have very accurate marketing information feedback yep. where 10 years ago we never had that with conventional marketing yep. so yeah it was sort of a hope and a prayer you know you sent out your little stack of cards <laughs> <laughs> i've been there <laughs> and, uh, keep your fingers crossed <laughs> the, the card deck we still do send out card decks but uh, a lot of people kind of laugh yeah, the card deck is an old technology. Well, we're, I think we're still in that tr transition phase oh, yeah. where some people are still comfortable with the older technologies. But I, I, let's go back to to what we were talking about earlier and the way you're creating this book because it yeah. tells you a lot about where p publishing is now and what its future could be like. And when I wrote I wrote my last book, my last book was published in 2000, mm -hmm. and um, in that instance. Uh, an editor asked me to write the book. I wrote the book. I sent the uh, the manuscript into the publisher. The publisher reviewed it and edited it and sent it to production. And production designed it and laid it out. Went to the printer. Went to the customer. Went you know went to uh, marketing and sales and ended up in the customer's lap. Mm -hmm. And it's a very that's a very traditional model of paper print print on paper. Right now we're seeing. This uh, kind of continuous process, and we have a we have a, a favorite uh, graphic that we use at a lot of meetings. It's about Fromers. dot com. Mm -hmm. So we're one of the leading travel travel publishers, and we've created this this circle uh, called the travel cycle. And then we've looked at what do we do in the travel cycle. So the first part of the of the uh, cycle is to sort of dream about what you're going to do. And you would look at uh, travel newsletters, newspapers, magazines, online forums, blogs, 
So right now we're doing travel newsletters, online forum, forums and blogs about right. travel, and then you plan, and we're doing guidebooks and travel web- websites uh, with text, photos, video, podcasts, recommendations, interactive maps, and then um, and custom PDF guides. Wow. And then you go, and when you're going, we continue to interact with you with audio walking tours, and now we're going to be launching, or have just launched, uh, maps that will go on your iPod with airport guides. Wow. And then after you come back, uh, we share with customers and with the, with the traveler online trip journals, online photo albums, nice. and uh, re- reviews and, and ratings. So there's, there's a continuous process of interaction here mm-hmm. rather than the linear process I, I described earlier. And when you add to that what you're doing, which is working with the community, your community, to develop content and review and refine the content, um, you have a completely different publishing model. It really is different, and that's, again, one of the things I appreciated about John Wiley and Sons, because the other publishers haven't quite figured this thing out yet, and you re- you guys really do have a handle on it, and really, it is this reiterative feedback process, but the cool thing is, is that for the first time, it's your actual customer that's involved in the process, feeding yep. back, and that's where the trusted network comes in. Yep. Yep. Big difference. Wow. And great summary too, by the way. So you're, you know, one of my favorite books, which we published, was uh, Norbert Wiener's Cybernetics, <laughs> in the feedback loop. And yep. uh, I, you know, every once in a while, I pull it out and I read it, and I go, yeah, 1948. <laughs> was it 1948? 1948, and we published it with MIT Press. We were partners at the time, and, oh my and that was a seminal work, and that was an instance in which a very uh, profoundly intelligent. Uh, forward-looking person wrote for us, and we went, huh, what does this mean for us? <laughs> Not only internal to the business ah. in terms of communication and processes, but our relationship with authors and and uh, and customers. And, of course, that was 1948. It's taken us a lot of years to actually follow through on those ideas. And, and Can you implement. imagine 60 years? But the cool thing about you guys, too, is, is you practice what you print. Yes. <laughs> That's a big difference. Uh, t- t- just uh, quickly, everybody's familiar with the dummies guides. What's the secret formula? What's the secret sauce? Why is every single one of those? Because I've interviewed um, uh, Evo Terra for podcasting for dummies and Stephanie Bryant, video blogging for dummies, and uh, t- uh, uh, John Arnold, who did email marketing for dummies. I mean, it just keeps coming up. This is an incredibly successful series. What do you attribute that? Well, it's the pedagogy that's embedded in the book. There's a template that we use, and it's tried and true. And, you know, it's, it's funny. Um, uh, actually, one of my uh, family members, I won't mention who, <laughs> said when we bought uh, dummies, said, well, you call me a dummy, I'm not going to read your book. But, of course, it's, it's facetious, um, and it doesn't travel in some cultures. Like uh, the irony of the dummy's name doesn't work well in Italy for some reason. But... Uh, it's the ability to take information and break it up into the right size bite yeah. for people to digest and then the ability to uh, create a format that, that allows people to review the material and then working with our authors to say to them, look, um, this, is, this is the pedagogy, this is what's, what works, uh, will help you. If, if, if you can do this yourself, fine. Uh, go ahead and write uh, the book. If you can't, we'll partner you with one of our our freelancers and 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 help you work to the pedagogy. And it's a very effective learning mechanism. But I think the interesting thing to me about dummies is we've taken it to the next level. And the next level is what we call Wiley Plus, which is our our uh, educational uh, experience. I'm not using the word platform. Notice <laughs> it's our educational experience where you take the the ebook and you put it in, in the center of a, an experience which uh, for the students uh, allows the students to read the text but interact with the te- text and test themselves against the test mm. a text and then assess uh, where they're doing well and where they're having difficulties 
and on the faculty side, there are ways in which the faculty member can communicate with the student, but also there are tools built in there that allows him to sort of set the the um, the difficulty of the test, the amount of time that wow. the student, the number of time the students can answer a question before it's counted wrong. But I think really important from a faculty member's perspective is two things. One is the ability to assess the individual student's performance by looking at, very directly looking at a student working in accounting problem and saying, oh, he made it through the first six steps, but he fell down on the seventh. So remediation for the student is going to be working on this particular problem. Wow. But the, the faculty members can also assess across the class and figure out where the class is having problems. So I think that's a very powerful social experience. The next uh, level, which we've already begun working on, is the ability to customize content. Mm. So the faculty member says, hmm, okay, we've got this textbook that's got 11 chapters, and really I only use four of them. So uh, we'll use these four chapters and my lecture notes and maybe an article here and a, and and uh, some graphics there, some PowerPoints that we provide or he provides, and the ability of the of the faculty member to create a customized textbook for the students he's working with. So if you're at a community college and you have remediation issues, um, you can gear the textbook to that level. If you're at uh, MIT and it's a freshman class, well, you're going to want to use more sophisticated material. And that's really exciting. I love the, I just love the, the custom content. Um, I teach at uh, four different universities from time to time. And yeah, any one textbook may only have 20 or maybe 30% at best of stuff that I want to teach for that particular curriculum. And you really can't pass the cost of four different textbooks onto the students, especially at the hard copy cost nowadays. But if you can actually create a customized textbook by pulling different chapters. And the cool thing, too, is you guys also keep track of like the royalties, too, so that each of the different authors get their portion of the royalties. Yep. yep. And uh, yeah, we're, we'll be taking this to, to, a, to a higher level within the next year with greater capability of, of um, greater customization capability. That is amazing, and I, I wasn't aware that you had that level of sophistication of online learning. To yeah, that's been well. that's been highly successful, and uh, you know there, there are a couple things going on here. Is it's a more effective way to teach, but uh, equally important, and particularly right now, is it reduced dramatically reduces the price of the textbook. Wow! Because students do not like buying a hundred and twenty-five dollar textbook, and then having the faculty member assign half of it. Sure. And for us, making sure that the faculty member uses what the faculty member needs and the student is only paying for what they're actually using is very important because it, can, it has dramatically reduced the, uh, the price of the textbook. And by the way, I appreciate that my daughter is in college right now, so thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Personally, thankful. Well, I don't know if you – tell you one story. We, I was at, a, at, a, at Brown Brothers Harriman in, in, on Wall Street, and uh, when I signed in, the uh, security guard uh, looked at the at the sign-in book, and it was my brother and myself and my son, Jesse. And he said, oh, Wiley, textbook publishers. He says, boy, those books are expensive. This was the security guard. And I said, oh, what are you, what are you studying? And he said, oh, intermediate accounting. And I said, well, is your professor using Wiley Plus? And he said, well, what's that? And I explained what I just explained to you, that it was a, an interactive e-book that you could get at much, a much reduced price. And he said, well, could I use it? And I said, well, your, your professor has to assign it. Yeah. <laughs> and so I gave him my card and asked him to have his professor call me. He was studying at Brooklyn College. <laughs> I haven't heard from the professor. Uh, so you're out there selling, too, then. Oh, yeah. You're not just the chairman of the board. <laughs> yep. And that is something, too, that I heard earlier that I wanted to comment on, is the fact that you're out there, you're participating in webinars, you're listening to your customers. And again, truly, that's what social media is about. But really, I think that's what's going to set, in this new millennium, that's really what's going to set one company competitively ahead of anybody else, yeah. is that you're out there listening. Yeah, we've, we've run, um, I haven't done this recently, I did it for a while, our, a lot of our uh, customer support is based in Indianapolis, and I, my, I'm based in San Francisco, and I'd go over to our San Francisco office from time to time and, and listen to the phone calls 
mm-hmm. where people are calling in and talking with our, our customer service people. Um, you know, they call up and say, well, I'm, I'm looking for a book on, I'm an accountant, and I want to know something about variable compensation. So then the person, our person, would talk to them about variable compensation, and they would recommend a number of of, uh, of, of books or journals, and then would engage the 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 customer in a in a conversation about well what what is what are your interests here because it's it's an upsell opportunity sure so now we've moved this uh, into a chat format a trusted and, format uh, so now we've got people uh, who you know want to earn some extra cash will do this in the evenings where they're chatting with maybe three or four customers simultaneously about um, it could be a problem you know where is my book. Mm. And working with UPS, we can track it. <laughs> well, actually, it's in the hand of the guy who's just approaching the door at Suite 11. Isn't that amazing? Uh, or we can be chatting with them about, well, what's the problem you're trying to solve here? Mm. Uh, what is the accounting problem that you're trying to, to solve? And then we can, because we have a very wide range of content and accounting in particular. We're mm-hmm. one of the leaders in that area. We can then engage them in a conversation and, and customize the material that we get to them. And, and that's amazing. And actually, uh, getting back to the social media Bible, that's one of the things that I wanted to do before we actually hardlined what the manuscript or the table of contents was going to be. So we actually put it out in front of a thousand people in all demographics, um, higher education, professionals. And what we found was is something that was really quite unique is that I thought Social Media Bible was going to really be another standard 250 page business book and I was prepared for that and the original table of contents reflected it when we got the feedback from the thousand people what we heard was they wanted three business books in one which I've never heard of <laughs> they wanted a tools you know how do we what are the tools what are all the social media tools that are out there how do they work what are they and then the middle part they wanted a reference guide who are all of the providers of those tools and what are their feature benefits and then the last part of course is the strategy how do I actually apply the first two parts of the book and use these in my company and create a marketing and, and communications plan. Never would have thought of three, uh, two business books sandwiching a, a guide, a reference book. Yeah. But that's what they asked for. Yeah. So it's like, wait a minute, if we simply give the people what they want, we probably stand a good chance of success. Yep. And then as, as you know, when it's it's, it's a, it becomes a, a continuous revision process. Mm-hmm. So right now, in the in the uh, in the world of, of print on paper, we'll put out a, an accounting book. It's eleventh edition one year, and then three years later, we'll go back to the authors and say, mm, "Okay, the accounting rules have changed. What do we need to change in the book?" Mm-hmm. Um, and we'll we'll revise it. But uh, with interactivity, you're constantly interacting with the customer who's using the tools to yeah. find out what works and uh, you know you could you can constantly revise it to it exactly becomes a, it becomes a, a stream of, of knowledge a st- and a stream of information rather than a very uh, finite object that you know kind of comes off the conveyor belt every three to six years yeah it's, it's more of a living document yep yeah, I love this. I swear, I would just love to continue to talk, but I know that you have a really busy schedule. Um, is there anything else that you'd like to say about uh, John Wiley and Sons Publishing, about social media, any way you want to kind of summarize, recap what we've talked about? Well, I, I, what I'd, I'd, I'd like to say is that, is that we're very interested in what you're doing because we, we think it's a pioneering piece of work and that our experimentation over years has um, brought us to the point where we're very interested not only of course that the books sell well but that what you're doing uh, becomes a, a kind of a, uh, a, pla- a, a not a platform a, a, a template for mm-hmm. what we could do with other books in the future yeah and I'm excited about doing that and Matt and I have actually had some conversations about once we start getting through this process we'll basically get my chapters written that um, I'd like to come back with them sit down and see if we can't kind of take everything that we've learned and I'm learning too by the way I mean I'm not an expert on all of these subjects but by, by doing the research and working with the experts I'd like to be able to bring this back into to Wiley but it sounds like you guys got an incredible handle on it I'm very very impressed that's cool 
Um, and you know, maybe you, you talk about three books in one, but there, you, over time, I'm sure you'll find the customer says, "Well, yeah, that's nice, but I want X." Yeah, and X is the pages uh, seventeen to twenty-seven in chapter two, and the opportunities um, to get the person exactly what they want in a very timely man, ma- manner is important. We, we use the expression "all wily all the time," <laughs> by which we mean you can. Our, our vision of the company is to create a an, an environment where our customers can get anything that they want out of Wiley in a very timely fashion. Um, if it's an article, if it's uh, a book, if it's a PDF, um, that they can identify what they want. We can help them identify what they want and get it to them quickly in the in the format they'd like it in. Do they want it in print? Do they want it uh, digitally? How do they want it? And that kind of leads me to another thought, not to, <clears throat> to keep you much longer, but um, with the new print-on-demand technology, do you see maybe someday where j- instead of doing it just for professors and classes that you can actually do custom content for individual purchasers? Uh, say that again, sorry? Print-on-demand? Do you print think that demand. instead of doing it for schools and professors and students that maybe the individual book buyer may someday be able to do that? Well, that's happening. We're doing a lot of that. Our print-on-demand business is going up up exponentially, and I know that um, without being specific at this point, that there are new print-on-demand technologies that are absolutely mind-blowing wow. in terms of the speed at which, and we'll see this unfold over the next two years, the speed at which high-quality um, print product fully bound in four color will be able to get to the, get to the customer. Really? So this this is going to uh, you know we're 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 at the beginning of a very rapid period of change in in POD and it's very important to us because we publish some very esoteric books that people still want uh, on you know print on paper mm-hmm. and uh, you know we can do one we can do five we can do ten my own last book was with Wiley and is now in in print on demand. Wow. We're in some exciting times here. Yep. <laughs> and you guys are riding the wave. I love it. <laughs> um, is, if somebody wants to uh, buy some Wiley books, where's the best place for them to go? How do they find out more about you and your company, too? Well, it's Wiley.com. And there are a couple of things there is that, you know, all of our content is there and people can find out what we've got. But the other is that somewhere on that website there is uh, an ability to uh, to sample our technology. So if you go to the first page, you'll see a uh, a button that you can hit to look at Wiley Plus and what that means, or wow. look at the way um, Wiley InterScience um, works, which is our digital platform for scientific, technical, medical, and scholarly publishing. Wow, and it's all available on your website at wiley.com. Yes, sir. That's terrific. Um, I'd really like to thank uh, Peter Wiley, chairman of the board of John Wiley and Sons Publishing, for being with us here today to talk about publishing uh, and social media and the social media Bible. Peter, thank you so much. Thanks, Lon, and it's it's great to be working with you and onward. <laughs> yes, sir, absolutely. This has been Lon Safko, the co-author of the Social Media Bible. Be sure to check out our other valuable social media tactics, tools, and strategies that can be found in the Social Media Bible book and its companion website, www.thesocialmediabible.com. For more information about me, Lon Safko, please, by all means, go over to my website at www.lonsafko.com. And again, Peter, truly and honestly, thank you so much for all that great information today. Thank you. Thanks a lot.